Why do some people seem to effortlessly accumulate wealth while others struggle financially? The secret could lie in understanding assets and liabilities. It's not just about making money. It's about what you do with your money that determines your financial future. Understanding the difference between assets and liabilities and how to manage them is the first step towards financial freedom. Today, we'll embark on a journey that will illuminate this crucial aspect of finance. By the end of this journey, you'll have a much clearer picture of how assets and liabilities can shape your financial destiny. So fasten your seatbelts as we delve into the world of assets and liabilities and how they can be your roadmap to financial freedom. Let's start by getting our basics right. What exactly are assets and liabilities? In the simplest of terms, an asset is something that puts money in your pocket. It can be a house you rent out, a stock that pays dividends, or a savings account that earns interest. Essentially, assets are your financial powerhouses, working tirelessly to generate income and increase your wealth. On the flip side, a liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. It's that car loan you're still paying off, the credit card bill that seems to grow every month, or the mortgage on a home you live in. Liabilities can be a real drain on your finances, sucking away your hard-earned money faster than you can say, debt. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, my beautiful house, my shiny car, aren't these assets? Well, not exactly. While these things do have value, they don't generate income for you. In fact, they cost you money in maintenance, insurance and loan repayments. Therefore, in the world of personal finance, they're considered liabilities. The roles of assets and liabilities in personal finance are quite simple. Assets help you build wealth. The more income generating assets you have, the more financially secure you become. On the other hand, liabilities can keep you stuck in a cycle of debt. The more liabilities you have, the harder it is to achieve financial freedom. So in essence, the goal is to increase assets and decrease liabilities. Easier said than done, right? But don't worry, as we progress through this series, we'll explore strategies to help you do just that. Now that we have a basic understanding of assets and liabilities, let's dive deeper into why they matter. Why should you care about assets and liabilities? Well, let's delve a bit deeper. You see, assets and liabilities aren't just financial jargon. They're the cornerstone of your financial health. They're the yin and yang of your financial world, influencing your net worth, shaping your financial freedom, and ultimately determining your economic future. Imagine your financial world as a scale, with assets on one side and liabilities on the other. The more assets you accumulate, the heavier that side of the scale becomes. These could be anything from your savings and investments to your property and business interests. They contribute to your wealth, increase your net worth, and provide a cushion of security. On the flip side, we have liabilities. These are your debts and obligations. From mortgages and student loans to credit card debt, these pull down your net worth. The heavier your liability side, the more it tips the scale away from financial freedom. Striking the right balance is crucial. Too many assets tied up in non-liquid forms can leave you cash poor. Too many liabilities can lead to debt and financial instability. It's like walking a tightrope. You need to balance your steps to stay upright and reach your financial goals. So assets and liabilities aren't just terms to know. They're essential players in the game of financial health. They shape your economic landscape and influence your financial future. Clearly, understanding and managing assets and liabilities is significant, but what types of assets and liabilities exist? Let's find out in the next chapter. Not all assets and liabilities are created equal. They come in various shapes and sizes, each with its unique characteristics that can either bolster or drain your financial health. Let's start with assets. Assets can be broadly categorized into two types, tangible and intangible. Tangible assets are those you can physically touch or see. This includes your home, car, or any valuable items you might own. Then there's real estate investments and stocks, which are considered as tangible assets as well, since they hold a physical value. On the other hand, intangible assets are those that you can't physically touch, but they still hold significant value. These include things like patents, copyrights, or brand recognition. A great example would be the brand value of a company like Apple or Google. 
Now, let's move on to liabilities. Similar to assets, liabilities can also be divided into two main types, current and long-term. Current liabilities are debts or obligations that need to be paid within a year. Examples include credit card debts, utility bills and short-term loans. Long-term liabilities, as the name suggests, are debts or obligations that are due more than a year from now. This could include things like your mortgage, student loans or any other long-term financial obligations you might have. But here's something to remember. Not all liabilities are bad. For instance, a mortgage can be a good liability if it allows you to own a home that appreciates in value over time. Similarly, a student loan can be a stepping stone towards a higher earning potential. The key is to understand the nature and impact of each asset and liability on your financial health. Knowing how to differentiate and manage them can be the game changer in your journey towards financial freedom. But how can we strategically build assets and reduce liabilities? Deuce. Building assets and reducing liabilities doesn't happen by chance. It requires strategy. Let's dive into some practical tactics that can help you bolster your asset column while keeping those liabilities in check. Firstly, budgeting is paramount. It's the financial roadmap that guides you towards your goals. By tracking your income and expenses, you can identify areas where you can cut back and save. Now, saving might not sound as exciting as investing, but it's the backbone of financial stability. It's your safety net when life throws curveballs. Speaking of investing, it's the golden goose of asset building. Investing allows you to put your money to work, generating more money in the process. It could be anything from stocks and bonds to real estate and mutual funds. However, remember that every investment carries a degree of risk. Therefore, it's crucial to do your homework and perhaps even consult with a financial advisor before diving in. Now, let's talk about liabilities. The most common form of liability for most people is debt. Whether it's a mortgage, student loan or credit card debt, it's crucial to manage it effectively. One method is the snowball method, where you start by paying off your smallest debts first to build momentum. Alternatively, the avalanche method focuses on paying off the debt with the highest interest rate first, which can save you money over time. Another key strategy is to increase your income. This can be achieved by advancing in your current job, taking on a side gig, or even starting your own business. Remember, the goal is not just to earn more, but to save and invest more. Lastly, always keep an eye on your financial health. Regularly review your assets and liabilities, adjust your budget, and tweak your investment strategy as needed. It's not a set it and forget it game, but a constant process of evaluation and adjustment these strategies sound great in theory, but how do they work in real life? Let's take a look at some real-life examples of people who have successfully built assets and reduced liabilities. Consider the story of Jane, a software engineer. Jane started investing in stocks at a young age. She made it a habit to save a percentage of her income every month to invest in blue-chip companies. Over time, these investments grew, turning into a significant asset for Jane. At the same time, she was cautious about not racking up unnecessary liabilities. She lived within her means and avoided falling into the trap of consumer debt. Today, Jane enjoys financial freedom, thanks to her disciplined approach to building assets and managing liabilities. Then, there's the tale of Mark, a small business owner. Mark understood the importance of acquiring assets that generate income. He invested in real estate, buying rental properties that provided a steady income stream. Simultaneously, he kept his business liabilities low by avoiding high interest loans and maintaining a lean operation. Mark's strategic approach to assets and liabilities has given him the financial stability he needs to weather economic ups and downs. And let's not forget Susan, a single mother who went back to school to improve her job prospects. She viewed education as an asset, an investment in her future earning potential. By securing a scholarship, she minimized her liabilities, turning her education into a profitable asset. As these examples show, understanding and managing assets and liabilities can significantly change your financial trajectory. Remember, every journey towards financial freedom begins with a single step. Start your journey today by understanding your assets and liabilities. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, 
subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated with our latest videos.